everybody, it's Free Sky Steve, and welcome to episode two of the O20 series. And today, before we get into setting up your models, let's take a moment and set up your radio because these are the kind of things that will make your experience a lot nicer working with your transmitter. And unfortunately, this isn't super well explained elsewhere. So before we get into your models, we're going to set your transmitter up. I do want to point out there's a big red icon right here. This is a big warning and it's a warning to let me know I shouldn't fly with this because this is a nightly build. I'm using a nightly build for the simulator and it's not really going to change much of anything. So that's what that's about. Let's get right into it. Um, I want to show you that there's two things here. So this is your gear icon for system so if you press this or this it's the same thing and this is your model icon same as hitting the airplane icon so the system icon are permanent changes and it doesn't matter what model you're on they're always they apply to all the models and the airplane icon means that you're dealing with individual model and whatever you set up in this model is not going to be used in your next model so that is the main difference. We're going to get into the permanent changes first by hitting the gear icon and we're going right into general settings. We're going to, you can see here there's a lot of interesting things in the display if you want to change your language and you can have multiple languages on here. You can go from English to German to Spanish to everything, all sorts of other languages, a lot of different things here. Italian. Anyway, that's how you change it. But you would have to do an update in Ethosuite to get the different display languages, the characters. Um, and then you would also do the same thing for your sounds as well. It, their sound files would be different. You'd have to load them. And just be careful. You, you may, they do take up quite a bit of space to load all these different sound files. So I would be careful with that before you would play with them. Uh, just pretty much stick to your chosen language or your cup two, three favorite chosen languages. Okay, now we're going to get into audio, kind of let the cat out of the bag. This is where you change the sound. Um, this is English, this is what I speak, and there's a great, great bit, GB for Great Britain or US. Uh, so voice one, it, I typically set up on US. Um, I'm going to show you that as far as the volume is concerned, I've set this up and I mean, how did I do this? So I'll, I'll discuss what that is and I'm going to, first thing I want to do is I want to get rid of that. So what you do is you long press on it until it says convert to volume and now how did I set it up? This is what you're typically going to see. It's going to look like this. If you long press on it and then say use the source and then press on this again. Uh, if you move something, so a pot or a slider or something, you will assign it. Uh, I can't do that in a simulator. So what I do is I, uh, this is an X20S simulator. So there's this long vertical slider in the middle of the radio towards the bottom people wonder what that's for and i say it could be anything you can set flaps to it but typically i like to set it for volume and what you do is select analogs and it's the very t the one i like to use is towards the bottom there it's pot three and that's that slider so that's how you set that up uh, Bluetooth is only available on the X20S, and since if you want to use Bluetooth audio, this is where you turn it on at. Okay, and variometer is something that we use if you're flying gliders. Um, that helps you determine if you have pitch, uh, if you have lift or, or lift or sink, and so it gives different tones for each of those. Uh, you have to have a variometer. Or, that can be a standalone sensor or built into a receiver. Um, the guys who are into gliders know exactly what this is all about. If you're not into it, you probably don't really care too much about this show. The next thing is the, the haptic. And 
that's the amount it shakes and sometimes those things are up so high that it really startles you so if you find it's up too high and it's becoming whenever you have a low vfr warning your radio is scaring the bejesus out of you uh you can turn it down right right there okay the top toolbar this is interesting because this is what it looks like when both things are off and actually no this is what it looks like when both things are off i don't particularly care for this i you know what does that mean my battery how much voltage is that I, I turn the digital voltage on so i get a hard number and i prefer that a lot more the digital rssi we turn it on it looks like this it, it gives you db if you're comfortable with db great otherwise this may be a little bit easier for it to work with and then the last thing i'll show you in this is that well uh, select model at power on I usually leave that off it, it just when you do that every time you power on your transmitter you get to select which model you're working with um, if you'd like to do that turn it on um, otherwise leave it off and the USB mode pre-selection there's some options here that you can use your transmitter when hooked up to a USB cable to your computer like a joystick uh, but me personally, I like whenever I hook my transmitter up to my computer, I want it to go right into Ethos Suite. So that is a nice permanent change. And with that, we're out of the general section. We're going right into date and time. And that's pretty self explanatory. You can turn 24 hour on or off, depending if uh, a lot of people love that military time. Um, and this is where you set the date. You can also do the auto adjust with GPS, turn that on. Though um, the GPS should give you the opportunity to set your oh, the GPS signal actually has the date and time, so it can update your transmitter. Uh, I've so far I've not really played with that, so I don't know exactly how well that works. Okay, now we're gonna get into something that might really annoy you. Um, when what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on a couple keys here. All right, so I got those set. And then I'm going to go in and to model and long press on it. We can go to another model. And I'm going to go to the receiver is still on. Throttle not idle. Switch warning. Well, that volume. Oops. Let me try that again. I, I'm so used to that. I just go right through it. So model select. I have to get to the, have to get the main screen. Model select. Long press. We'll get to the extra. Set as Throttle current. Not idle. Fail safe, not set. All right. Now you can see when your switches are not in the right position that uh, they will be. You get these switch D and switch E are not in the safe position, and so what you have to do is you have to keep playing with switch E until it goes away, and then switch D until that goes away, or you can do this you can go into under models and you go into the next screen here and go to checklist and unfortunately you have to do this with every single model you set up but you can go in there and switch the switches to not check so other that what that means is that it doesn't care where switch a is or switch b is um, so you can go, you have to go in one at a time and set these up. And I know, I really wish there's a way to turn them all off. The thing I would recommend is to not turn them off for your, uh, if you have an electric plane, I would not turn off your, your throttle kill. That one should be on check. So you make sure you don't start your model up with the ignition on. And the other one you might want to make sure if you don't do is make sure you have that on so that you don't accidentally have your landing gear um, come up as you get into the new model. Because I've seen that before at the field where the, the landing gear goes up and the plane just crashes to the ground. It doesn't usually do a lot of damage, but it's kind of embarrassing. Okay, now the thing that I am telling you, the thing that, why you're so fortunate to have hung out with me all the way to the bitter end of this video is for what I'm about to bestow on you here. There is something that really, well, 
couple things that will annoy you. Um, first of all, we're going to go into the alerts. So the first one is real time clock. This real RTC setting, um, the RTC voltage. What that is, is a little button cell battery. It's behind the main transmit module in your transmitter. In order to get to it, you have to take the back off. You have to take off that board and get into it. It's, it's on the second board. It's a little battery, only a few dollars for the battery. If you don't really have a lot of experience working inside the transmitters, I highly suggest you do not open it up. For a nominal fee, you can send it off to service, and the guys will update the radio for you, put the battery, new battery in, and send it back to you. So I would recommend that. But if, let's say you're saying, I'm going to send it in, but maybe I want to wait a little while and wait till there's I have another problem, I need to send the transmitter in, and I'll kill two birds with one stone. But you don't want to hear that sound, because by default, these things are on. Um, you can turn off the real-time clock voltage system alert, so it's not going to notify you that your real-time clock battery is low. All right, the other thing is sensor conflict warning. Since uh, FreeSky has a lot of telemetry, this is the big one, I feel. Since we work with a lot of different types of telemetry, occasionally we'll have one sensor conflict with another sensor, and you get this sensor conflict warning. And... I will tell you this, if that comes up frequently, if you have sensor conflict warning, sensor conflict warning, sense, you know, like once every five seconds you get the message, oftentimes that means that the firmware on your receiver is out of date. So um, before turning this off, maybe you want to check to make sure your receiver is up to date. And if not, you have to do an OTA update on your receiver, and we'll be covering that in a different video. But even when you do everything by the book and everything right, occasionally the sensor conflict warning shows up and it's really annoying. So you can come in here and turn it off and get rid of that warning. And that is a beautiful thing. And with that, I say thank you for watching. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thank, have a great day.